good morning all of you in today's lecture i am going to talk about detailed aspects of rana tigerina or common indian bullfrog first of all what is systemic position or classification its phylum is chordata due to presence of notochord notochord is a rod like structure which is present on the dorsal side of embryo and later changed to vertebral column sub phylum is vertebrata due to presence of vertebral column or backbone the division is gnathostomata gnathostomata means mouth is bounded by jaws super class is tetrapoda presence of two pairs of limbs class is amphibia due to its amphibious habitat sub class is aneura as it is tailless amphibian order is phaneroglossa due to presence of tongue and type is rana tigerina genus rana species tigerina so first of all what is the habitat you all know it's an amphibious animal so it's commonly found near fresh water bodies and being as uh, being an amphibious animal it can live both on land as well as in water now what are the habits of frog it's an diurnal animal diurnal means it is active during day time it is carnivorous feeds upon insects spiders worms other small animals etc and that you know feeding is done by its tongue the tongue is very large sticky and protrusible third important feature it can swim in water as well as hop on the land so hopping and swimming that is leaping and swimming two common mode of locomotion it's a cold blooded animal means it is poikilothermal that means temperature of the body cannot be maintained at a constant value temperature keeps on changing with the surrounding and that is why this animal undergo hibernation and estivation hibernation means it is winter sleep and estivation means it goes summer sleep also then it's a unisexual animal and very inter- interesting aspect both the sexes can be identified very easily that means it shows sexual dimorphism you can see the difference we can find difference among male and female frog if you identify both kind of frog then you can find them with the help of two major differences see the very first one where arrow is shown it is the nuptial pad or copulatory pad that present on the underside of thumb only in male frog and second important feature present of vocal sacs which are balloon like structure seen on the sides of head and these vocal sacs are present only in male it enable it to produce a croaking sound croaking sound is produced during rainy season and it's a type of mating call that attracts female for copulation or mating okay so male frog is having nuptial pad and vocal sacs which are all together absent in female and these help us to identify them so being amphibious animal it goes to water for eggling okay and fertilization occur in surrounding water development is indirect means there occur a larval stage called tadpole larva which changes into adult frog after metamorphosis and you know certain species of frog they are also able to change their color and this is called metacrosis they do it for the process of defense so these are habits of rana tigerina now we'll talk about external feature this is external feature see its body is dorso ventrally flat and appears to be streamlined okay it has bilateral symmetry it is about 18 to 20 cm in length and 5 to 8 cm in width body has two parts basically head and trunk there is no neck and no tail it's a tailless amphibian now see the head head is somewhat flattened and triangular structure okay it is produced into a snout like structure on the anterior end it has a terminal large mouth which enable it to ingest the other animals ingest it prey it bears one pair of openings called nostrils or external layers for respiration one pair of large sized eyes can be seen eyes are very large and spherical in size let me tell you each eye is surrounded by covered by three eyelids upper upper eyelid which is immovable lower eyelid which is slightly movable and a nictitating membrane 
or third eyelid which is freely movable let me tell you this third eyelid protects frogs eye under water and even on the land from dust or other particles so each eye has three eyelids upper eyelid lower eyelid and a third eyelid or nictitating membrane now in the center of head which is not shown here frog also contain a brow spot this brow spot indicate presence of vestigial third eye or pineal eye then on head you can see a pair of tympanic membrane or tympanum what is tympanum it is nothing but ear drum frogs doesn't carry their outer ear external ear so their head surface of head contain tympanum or tympanic membrane which receive the sound waves from ear and help in uh, which receive the sound waves from air and help in hearing now see there is another part called trunk trunk contain a pair of fore limbs and a pair of hind limbs so it is divided into two parts anterior thorax and posterior abdomen i told you frog belong to superclass tetrapoda tetrapoda means two pairs of limbs are there so it has a pair of four limbs which are short and stouter each four limb has three part you can see in the figure brachium antibrachium and manus brachium is upper arm antibrachium is forearm and manus is hand which has four digits okay the first digit is called pollex or thumb i told you na first digit or thumb in male frog carries a pad the pad is called an apical pad or copulatory pad which become very large during breeding season and this pad help the male to grip female frog during sexual activity during pseudo copulation now the second pair of limbs these are hind limbs they are larger in size you can see each hind limb contain three parts upper thigh or femur middle shank or crus and a distal foot or pes just see foot contain five toes and in between toes there are strong webs these webs enable the frog to swim very easily inside water okay so let me tell you the first pair of limbs are four limbs and the second pair of limbs these are hind limbs now last end of body contains an opening called cloaca cloacal aperture like in other animals there is a common uh, different opening for urinary for reproductive and for digestive system but in frog there is single opening called cloacal aperture and this opening is exit for digestive system urinary as well as reproductive system means it's a common outlet for fecal matter urine and even for gametes okay so this is all about external morphology of frog next we talk about skin of frog I told you it's an amphibious animal it can live on land as well as inside water now all amphibians they are somewhat unique their skin is soft slimy and contain abundant mucus gland because their skin act as a breathing organ respiratory organ they show cutaneous respiration and that is why skin needs to be thin permeable and somewhat slimy and moist so just you see the structure of frog skin frog skin contain two layers upper epidermis and lower dermis epidermis just like other vertebrates it is made up of stratified epithelium stratified means it is made up of many layers the lower most layer is called stratum germinativum and this lower most layer stratum germinativum it rest on a basement membrane this layer keeps on dividing and by its division it produce new cells the cells goes upward and as they reach at the topmost layer they become dead and the layer is called stratum corneum let me tell you in frog skin keratinization or formation of keratin protein is somewhat less and that is why in frog body hard structures like scale nails etc these are absent okay so upper layer is epidermis made up of stratified epithelium which contains stratum germinativum the bo bottom layer which divide and a thin stratum corneum present on the uppermost layer now the most important part is dermis of frog 
okay dermis is made up of connective tissue it is mesodermal in origin and see it has two regions the upper part is stratum spongiosum and lower part is stratum compactum see stratum spongiosum stratum spongiosum is outer and spongy part it contain blood capillary lymph capillary and very important it contain large number of flask shaped mucus glands so abundant mucus glands are present in stratum spongiosum okay and this these mucus glands they produce rich amount of mucus which goes outside through the duct and make a layer over the skin to make it moist and slimy then the lower layer we are calling it stratum compactum it is the lower and compact part it is made up of white fibers or collagen fibers and see these collagen fibers they run vertically as well as horizontally another important thing you see in dermis of frog there are present chromatophores also chromatophores are pigment cells and as the name indicate they provide color to frog skin okay these chromatophores can be of three types they can be melanophore they can be lipophore or they can be guanophore melanophore are those which contain melanin pigment brown or black melanin pigment lipophores contain yellow to red pigment and guanophore i told you which are third type of chromatophore they do not contain a pigment rather they contain guanin crystal and i told you initially na that frog is able to change its color the color change that is metacrosis is done with the help of chromatophores and you know due to chromatophores frog is able to change the body color and that help it to blend with the surrounding and that enable it to you know protect itself from prey only okay from predator so this is how skin of frog contain epidermis and then dermis layer epidermis contains stratified epithelium and dermis mainly contain connective tissue having two parts stratum spongiosum and stratum compactum so just like other animal skin of frog it is providing protection to the body it secrete mucus and those mucus make the sli skin slimy and moist which help in respiration okay then web which develop due to skin only web is arising from skin and those webs between the toes help in swimming okay skin also provide shape to the animal and skin help in respiration as i told you frogs carry cutaneous respiration then skin is also sensitive to touch temperature pain pressure etc due to chromatophore skin is able to change color and that provide you know protection to frog from the various predators so this is all about today's lecture we have done regarding external morphology habitat habits and skin of frog for my another lecture subscribe my channel and get another lecture on frog the detailed idea of rana tigerina and in case you have any doubt then you can ask me in comment section please put your comments subscribe my channel and find new videos related to rana tigerina thank you so much